All right, here we are with Nida Mehtab, founder and CEO of Koreatik LLC. It's really nice to meet really you. Nice I enjoyed you. hearing you speak on the on the panel just now. Now tell me a little bit about women empowerment because we are at Open Conference. You know, this is the focal point for today's conference, which is women empowerment. Tell us in a few sentences what that means for you. It's a way of life. Way of life. <laughs> It's a mindset, okay. and I mean, it it means a lot to me personally, also. And Karyatid, if people who who don't know, Karyatid is a Greek architectural element, mm. which is in the uh, in essence in the Temple of Athena. So it's a women female figured columns, okay, supporting the structure, lifting the structure. Oh. So that is this is how much it means to me as well. And I know that um, I have my nieces and all that. And I see that how. Women these days, uh, maybe historically, women had uh, more, more, uh, not enough awareness or not enough uh, information available to help everybody. But in this day and age, there's enough out there that no industry should be staying as a male dominant industry. Yeah. So that's that's basically what I it means to me, and that's yeah. what I'm trying to do in the workplace. I love that. Now, as a woman of color, being a CEO in this you know day and age, what have what are some of the challenges that you faced growing this company? Well, first of all, you we all know that workplace and real estate industry is a very male dominant industry, yeah. like a lot of other industries. But um, I think from the challenges perspective. Uh, We all know that if 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 a man is talking about a certain subject and the woman is that's treated differently, but I do genuinely think that that is more of a problem of a person who is perceiving that right. way than mine. So being passionate about what you do is really important because then you really consider those challenges being like, okay, this is an opportunity to really educate the other side as yeah. well. Um, I do think that as a as a CEO and founder and woman of color, those. When you're when you're really into something, heads down, and your soul and heart is into it, really in the end, color doesn't matter, and that's what people also start to realize about you as well. And you're about your vision. They get they get more bought into the vision right. and what you're offering, and then you become just one of the avatar of yeah. that of that of that vision. So that's how I think that I I. I operate yeah. and <laughs> take the take the mission forward. But no, it makes sense because I'm usually I'm always the only one in my entire team, like only female, and I don't see a difference. Like I don't act like there's a difference. So then I don't people don't treat me differently either. You know what that I mean? So it's all about how you behave, and then people will kind of you know follow that motion. That's absolutely correct. Um, I have a question regarding the change from. Covid till now, since you know you work on workplace, can you tell me a little bit more about how that has changed for you and your company? Yeah, so our company has been always been in a distributed workforce model. So our 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 team is really globally distributed mm -hmm. within US and the uh, outside of US in the UK and in Asia Pacific. So from that perspective, the way we operated uh, did not change significantly. But what it did change is the industry has changed significantly. Right. So. Previous, exactly. Mm -hmm. So when we were talking, when previously when we were talking to the organizations, the appetite to have flexibility in the in the core work hours or work days or just general flexibility around the schedules, there was not a lot of appetite around that. Right. And so that was part A of the equation. Part B of the equation was there was also not a lot of um, technology and the processes that were designed to enable that flexibility as an employee or in right. organizations. But what pandemic has done is that it has accelerated that change. It has really accelerated that acceptance of oh, this is also how we can work. Yeah. So previously, we it was more of a, like. Um, Actively, we had to advise the mm -hmm. clients and the leaders that hey, people are on different phases of their lives. Women specifically, they go through different phases of their lives that changes the need and the how much they can work at what yeah. time can they work. So flexibility was important before as well, but now because of the acceptance, we have we are able to really push in that direction. That how do we take flexibility forward and holistically in a way that. If you have to go pick up your kid, you don't have to ask for someone's right. permission. It should not be a favor mm -hmm. or a permission to be given to you. You should feel empowered that hey, my processes and the way my organization operates enables that way of working right. that I can. And that's why I think one of the things I always say is that work-life balance is probably a myth. 
it work life harmony is what is uh, I love that. is something that we should be striving for work because work life harmony <laughs> because I, i guess that if i'm if, I, if i'm during mm-hmm. four working hours and i need to take care of something yeah. in a person life i should be able to just ping around someone and say hey yeah. i'm going to be right back in 30 minutes similarly if there's something urgent that needs to be taken care of even if it's eight o'clock and that is my prerogative and i should feel empowered that if it's my responsibility yes i can do that so the the shape of work and workplace and how flexibility is really um, enabling that is sh- is shifting. shifting it's becoming more fluid and, and and with more flexibility comes more autonomy when right. people feel more autonomous they do their best work Absolutely. So that's I agree. That's, I agree. That's where we are. No, I love that. Now my last question is for any like female young woman who's eager to start their own company. What kind of advice would you give them? So, um there are two moments of advice I would say. Is that if you want to do something like go ahead and do it do because it. oftentimes what keeps us from doing something is a uh, fear of failure. Yeah. And until you won't fail, you won't know if you if you will not bring yourself to the point of trying you won't know if you're failing or succeeding and the difference between a failure and someone who succeeded is that he, pro- he or she probably tried one more time right, right. so i think this going ahead and um, and trying it and not uh, being afraid of failure is is my primary thing and be bold in what you think and i um, and it's easier said than done right. i know for women specifically because we are brought up in a way that we are supposed to please others or we are yeah. supposed to be submissive and just mm-hmm. so uh, from that perspective i would say just uh, find that even if you have to fail mm-hmm. you would rather you would you should rather try to fail sooner than later and learn from it and try another time yeah i love that well thank you so much thank for you speaking for having with me, me.